Greetings and welcome fellow engineers. Now, seeing how Starship Simulator has been going so well over the past couple of days, I've been thinking of doing a full comprehensive engineering guide of how to do a cold start from scratch on this uh, uh, for, for these ships. Now, I do know that there is like a, an engineering tutorial under the training mods, but I wanted to go through what each and every device does sort of give you an idea or understanding of how I see what's going on with this and to might help you along a little bit more than what the tutorial can actually give you but um yeah so without further ado let's uh, get on with it no uh, no ceremonies or such let's just go straight into uh, let's go straight into this firstly just so that we can get our bearings as you can see this is the ship what we, where we need to go is to the bottom engineering. So go to the right of the lift, all the way down through the middle of the three doors. And then we go down the stairwell, all the way down to the bottom to get to engineering. As you see, the first one is science deck. Then after science, you have the ha uh, habitation lab, habitation decks. Two habitation decks. Then we should be getting into engineering. Now, as you can see, we can't go down any further, but where we need to start is one level down, which is actually inside the main engineering reactor room here. So you can tell you in, you're in the main engineering reactor room when you start seeing this, uh, this wonderful device here. And there is a set of steps that goes down here into the main section, the lower section, which is where we want to be starting. So this is our starting area. Now, as you can see, everything is all cold and dark and, as, as it says, uh, cold and dark. What we need to do first is to provide a little bit of power to the reactor to be able to get it to start up. So to do, the, uh, to do that, we have an emergency startup battery, which is both basically allows you to provide a little bit of power to the base core essential systems to actually get uh, to allow you to kickstart this thing to go in, in, into operation now to find that place find where this console is behind you there's a door and just slightly to the left there's this open door here and you'll notice this console here now this room I presume will be when, it fin when it's finished being built, we'll probably have the main startup batteries all around here, the, like the capacitors and such, that uh, you will need to charge to make sure that it has a constant power going in. But for the purpose of this demo, this little tech demo that we've got at the moment, the battery should have an unlimited amount of power until we can actually get this section uh, in uh, working properly. Now, if we look at this section here, the startup distributors, this, it, you can see by following the design arrows, you can work out where everything is going. So from startup capacitor feed, so incoming with that arrow, you can see it's got live volts of 50 watts, one, uh, one megavolt of voltage and zero amplitudes coming up into the start capacitor and then into the internal bus. Now, as you can see, it's got no load flashing on. That means that that's where it stops. There's The power is not going anywhere from here. And that's correct. None of these are connected. So the first thing that we've got to do is connect these. Now, what this is doing here is whilst we're connecting these, is providing power, minimum power, to all the base sections of the deck. So the forward deck. So forward deck, you've got four both the forward deck and, sorry, let me rephrase that, G deck and F deck. So, which are the two lower levels of engine, two lower levels of the ship, which are basically engineering. So ba engineering consists of F deck and G deck. Uh, and each deck has got four quadrants, quadrant meaning four. So forward, starboard, aft and port. So what we just done is just provided a little bit of power from the startup battery to these sections. Now these sections will provide things like emergency lighting 
to show that we are currently on the backup battery or the startup battery as this is called and the final uh, the final connector is the reactor supply to put a little bit of a uh, little bit of energy towards the reactor so that we can get the reactor started now once we've done that let's go back into the reactor and as we can see here we have got the reactor panel up and running now as you can see a lot of red flashing lights all over the place the first thing that we need to address is the high temperature in the coolant loop as you can see the high temperatures are over well nearly 300 degrees kelvin and we need them to be below 20. outside of this we have got no power to the vacuum pump and no flows from the cooling systems or the dilithium or uh, deuterium sorry i'm getting star trek mixed up we don't use the lithium in here we use deuterium same difference but yeah and yes and we've got a no no flow no power so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to take energy from the batteries now we provided energy to the reactor room but the reactor is not actually accepting it at the moment see if you can see here we've got the incoming as we're following these arrows here the incoming of feed reactor start so the start basically means the startup battery it's providing that but it's not connected because it's switched off so we turn it from isolate to startup and there we go and as you can see we are now feeding power into the reactor from the startup battery this here is feed reactor supply so basically this is getting this is getting power from the reactor and sending it out to the ship but we're not doing that yet because we haven't even turned the thing on yet we're still working from the power uh, the battery but with that we've got enough to start the vacuum pump up why do we need a vacuum pump because for the fusion coils to actually work they need to be working in a near vacuum of internal pressure of less than 10 nanopascals so we start the vacuum pump to reduce the uh, the internal pressure so it goes from pa to mpa not nanopascals yet and then when that gets down from mpa it goes down to i have no clue what that symbol means upa or an upside down h yeah but that's not nanopascals this is nanopascals so once that gets down to below 10 when that gets down to below 10 that's enough for this to actually work and next one thing you can see is the it's gone from vacuum uh, the, pr the pressure is too high to fill coils offline now the fill coils is basically what may what allows the reactor to actually react i don't know it's star trek magic but hey ho and the v and the fuel coils here are under the coolant loop because it needs to be cooled to actually work and as you can see higher cold temp and as, as i said earlier the co uh, the temperature is oh it's nearly like 300 degrees kelvin so we're going to need to get that down a little bit so let's go and sort out the uh, piping i think the, I personally think this is one of the most complicated parts of this. Electricity is easy to understand, but flowing of, uh, a flow of flow of liquids, I think it's a little bit more complicated. But that's just me. Now, as you can see, there are several little uh, several uh, containers, uh, uh, tanks, and pumps around here. I'll go through what each one of these are, but first. We need to get start from over here. Now there are three elements here that we need to work out, work with. We've got helium, which is for coolant. We've got helium free, not to be mixed up with helium. Helium free is part of the fuel. And also we got two tanks of deuterium, deuterium fuel tank A and deuterium fuel tank B. Now, for the reactors to actually work, 
you need one part helium free and t uh, for every two parts of deuterium. So we need twice as much deuterium as we need for helium. I know this sounds complicated, but we're just going to be pressing buttons and it hopefully will be easy. So firstly, before we can actually get these, uh, these pump in, we need to cool them down because if we have a little look at these, uh, let's have a look at this uh, coolant tank here. So we have got three, we've got several coolant tanks. Sorry, we have several tanks. The first one is the coolant tank, and as you can see, its temperature is still nearly 300 degrees Kelvin, or 293 degrees Kelvin, 293 degrees Kelvin. So let's get that temperature down a little bit, hey? So firstly. This is the helium chamber pump. So firstly, we'll turn the pump on. And as you notice, that is going down. Although I'm surprised because we actually haven't supplied the helium for it yet. So HE, let's open the valve. Yeah, that wasn't meant to go down, by the, by the way. Just by turning that on, that wasn't meant to go down, but the fact that I have now just opened the valve for that, which allows helium to go into the coolant system and for that to go in. And as you can see, this tank is now starting to fill up with helium. As you can see, fill level is now starting to rise, and as that's rise, this will grow. And same with the electrics, you can see the flow by these arrows. As you can see, the pipe, helium, retrofit, um, I'm not sure what RFL stands for. Uh, the flow rate, the pressure, and also the temperature in there, and also as it's going out. But we're not, you, we're not sending these to anywhere else just yet, but we will be soon. So, the next thing is the helium free tank so this is the first part of the fuel system and as you can see that temperature is still quite high so first thing we need to do now that we've got the coolant tank working we need to start uh, distributing that coolant to the other tanks to cool them down so this is the helium free coolant pump so we turn that on we will then notice that that should start going down because it's now being fed coolant from over there. There you go, excellent. And now that that's being cooled down, we can now put, open up the valve for helium free. Down there, let's get that nice sizzle there. As you can see, now that the fuel level is starting to rise and you'll start seeing, as you can see, tank starting to fill up there cool excellent that, so that's the coolant and the he coolant of helium and uh, the first part of the fuel helium free next is the deuterium so we got two tanks for deuterium fuel tank a and deuterium fuel tank b both as you can see are at 293 kelvin so we need to bring the temperature down there so let's act activate the coolant pumps on both of these as you can see they should start going down now they're going down now whilst they're going down let's open the valves and let a little bit of deterioration 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 what are they called deuterium go in there so, there you go they're starting to uh feel sorry just gotta wipe my eyes up itch in my eye there we go 400 and they're starting to fuel. Cool. So those are the tanks that are starting to fuel. That's starting to fuel, but that's not all. Just to let you know, this, these two monitors are reflected over here. So the monitor, as you can see, this monitor here. So that's 18, 19, 20, 19, 20, etc., etc. That's going up. I don't like the fact that's going on. It's reflected here. So these monitors are reflected over here so you can actually see what's going on with these. Now, this is the pumps that sends it from the tanks to the main reactor. 
And as you can see, we need to open up these to let these uh, to let let the fuel go into the pumps, and then we start powering the pumps on to push the fuel to reactors. Now, as you as you can see, the flow rate is zero. Come on, it's supposed to be zero. <laughs> yeah, but the flow rate of these pumps are going to be zero simply because we haven't opened them up at the reactor. But we'll get back to that in a moment. So let's see now. Same thing over here. That's for the two deuterium tanks. We also need the... This one's the helium-free tank. And the standard helium coolant tank as well. So yeah, so basically, as you can see, we are now pumping, pumping fluid. Well, as I said, there's no flow rate yet because we haven't opened it up at the uh, we haven't opened it up at the reactor. But you can see you've got pressure on these where you didn't have before. So those have been opened up. Let I think it's this way. Hmm. Let's go to the f go to the reactor and now open up the pumps so that the uh, so we can both cool the reactor and supply the fuel. The helium supply for the coolant and then the deuterium supply and the helium free supply. As you can see, that's starting to go. That's these are starting to cool. Coolant loop, upper cold temperatures. They are now starting to cool down because we, when we opened up the coolant in here, that should start to cool down. Got the pro pressure. Okay. Just want to just quickly show you just to um, is in here that so now now I've opened these up. As you can see we have a flow rate. So the flow rate, that should have said zero earlier, I don't know why it didn't, but yeah, the uh, the flow rate is now showing that there is, um, the, the components are now going from the fuel tanks to the reactor, which is cool. Okay, so I think that is the main part. Let's get this baby started. So, Fuel coils. Everything's all cooled down. We can now activate the fuel coils, which means that the reactor is now primed and ready to be turned on. And let's initiate the reactor. I, I, I really want that to be whomping later when it comes up as we go. Now, just in ca it, just for safety reasons, it does start off at 10%, but we want to increase uh, increase that to like 100% output. You can increase it to be on 100%, but um, we don't want to uh, increase it beyond 100% because that can cause instabilities in the eventual game. But now that we've actually got power coming out from here, we can now switch up and take it offline from the startup because the reactor is still getting provided power from the startup battery when it can now supply itself. So we take it from the startup battery and supply itself. Uh, and as you can see straight here, it's now, well, it was said no load, but it just took a moment for it to distribute itself out to all the uh, sectors. Right, now, yeah, now we've done that, let's go and distribute everything to the uh, to the ship. As you can see, the ship is still red because we are still taking in power from the startup battery. I just want to give you a little moment's not notice of this particular panel here. Once we have fully taken off from the startup battery, we're going to want to 
provide power provide power back to the startup capacitors so that we can charge it for later use but I will get back to that once we've finished everything here but for the moment I want to power up our distribution centers so now that we've got reactor output at uh, a nice and moderate 100 megavolts it's coming in to the internal bus and it's not being distributed anywhere. So let's turn on these distributors so that this will actually distribute power from the reactor to the main uh, the main areas of the ship. And as you can see, these things are starting to come on when you go. Now, if we're so far in the reactor output into the distributor, and we have got here uh, prop. Uh, which is propulsion, so sublight distributors, the weapons feed, so the west weapons distributors, feed sh SHLD, which is the shield distributors, FTL, faster than light distributors, and the batteries. Now these somehow work in reverse, so, so starting from the right going to the left will be from like that was the right going to the left here. So as you got up here battery, FTL, shields, weapons, sublight. We will have battery, FTL, shields, weapons, and sublight attribute. Now it's quite important to get the batteries up online here. So firstly, I am just going to start sending that power to the batteries. I'll explain this in a few moments. Uh, firstly, input feeds. As we can see, we've got three different input feeds here at the moment. We've got the feed for the main uh, main battery distributor, which is what's coming up from there, which is receiving power straight from the reactor. So that is essentially the reactor feed. This one here is the external feed. So if you were, say, connected to a space station or a stocking station, that would receive power from externally, which will be helpful when charging up some of your batteries and you're low in power yourself. Uh, and I'm guessing, I thought this might be for like connection to the startup, but it doesn't seem to be anything to do with a startup. There might be some sort of uh, emergency solar array, as, it, as the name suggests right here which will allow you a small input to gather a small amount of startup so that you can try and get things up and running. But this is a work in progress. That will come later when they, when they figure it out. Now, the batteries. There are two rooms in each other. Actually, let's go to a... Uh, Actually, the batteries are on the topper, topmost, on the upper engineering level. So let's go to this here. Now, we have four quadrants, again, four meaning quadrant, meaning four, in the starboard, aft, port, and forward, uh, and forward sections of the ship. Uh, and each one of these sections has got two battery rooms. So as you can see here, we've got forward, room ba forward battery room one, forward battery room two. Starboard battery room one, starboard battery two, aft, aft, and port, port. Now these battery rooms are sort of like capacitors. They store energy, they store, um, store electricity to be used for all the components in that sector. And there are a lot of components to be used in the in the sectors, such as for like lightings, doors, and so on and so forth. But we will go through each section as we have a look at them. Now, firstly, let's have a little look at what these batteries are. So nice and dark. So it's fr I am guessing that in time these little sections here will store will be what's storing the batteries. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's like ten batteries in each section. And it should be about six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. 
six sec six sections. So yeah, there's a lot of batteries here for each for each room. Remember, there's two rooms for each um, each quadrant and four quadrants for each for the ship. <laughs> but yeah, as we can see with this little. Uh, bank or array of batteries they are charging up nicely because they are receiving power to the ship um, following the diagram power comes in feed port battery array 01 live load port battery distributor input bus and it's distributed to these eight batteries to be charged all output to the same output bus and then sent off to the ship now, where this connects to the ship is in the back part of the actual ship itself. So, uh, this is where we go into the Jeffrey's tubes, and we see two. We we each room uh, has got both an input and output. I'm going to turn the lights off here so we can actually see it. So, this is the output, and this over here on the other side of the room is the input. Now this is set up in a very unique way uh, that the input, uh, as you can see here, this is receiving input from the reactor into the main di battery distributor and is then being supplied to each of the six battery arrays. As you can see, part, uh, part battery array, one, two, three, four. So if I was to turn one of these off, let's go back in. If I was to turn one of those off, I can't remember which one, we will then find out that that particular battery array, which one was it? Was it this one? I thought it was two. I can't remember which one that I turned off now. So that one's live load 50. That one's live load 50. That one's five, live load 50. Oh, it, this one, see, this one's not receiving any charge. The live load, zero. So no voltage. So this one's not receiving power because we turned it off outside. So this one's not receiving power. So therefore, that ba battery array will not charge until we turn it back on again. So let's go and turn that back on. Okay. Now, as I said, that this section here is a room with all with all the battery arrays in here. So we've got one on this side as, uh, to for receiving power in, and the one on the other side takes power out uh, to go to the end of the ship. So this is, as you can see, battery array feeds uh, feeding part battery agri uh, aggregate. Feeding part battery array one of one, one uh, two, three, four, five, six, and then sending out to the rest of the ship. And once we connect that, that will then be fed back into the reactor room's distribution sensors so that it can be sent out to the rest of the ship. Um, and we need to do that for all of the battery rooms. So as I said, there's two in each quadrant and four quadrants. So that's about eight in total. Uh, I want to point out this little bit of design, ship design. Now, this ship, this little corridor here, goes to the F deck, which is the top engineer, and the battery rooms, uh, so that you can, so that when you leave the battery rooms, you can go out and reconnect these. And as I said, there's another room over here, which is, which also needs connecting because this is. Battery array, uh, port battery array two. And that's port battery array one. So that's two down for the uh, eight. So that's six left. However, if we go to the input side of this, so this is the input side. As you can see, input feed. Uh, there's also another input feed for the room next to it. Yep. But this part is actually goes down and leads into the lower engineering 
right, ne right next to the reactor room. Uh, the lower part of the reactor room where you've got all the distribution sensors. So I think that's uh, a pretty neat design. So, yeah, we need to connect up all the battery rooms. So we don't need to worry about the input feeds because the input feeds were all good. We need to look about the output feeds to connect the battery rooms to the rest of the ship. So aggravator set forward and that one there. And that leads to the top. Going along here, this would be the input. Input feed, yep. And that leads downstairs. So actually, yeah, so that leads downstairs. That's uh, another input feed. So running around here, they go to the output feeds, connect that one connect that one. As I said that leads up to this level. We should have another input feed for this room and next one. So input feed for that room. Input feed for that room. And that leads downstairs to lower engineer. And we've got an output feed here. And also oh, the other side of here as well. Might as well do this one. Yep. Yeah, and that leads to the main corridor. Just double check to make sure I got them all. Uh, that's the output, sorry, that's the input feed. Lead downstairs, input feed again. And yeah, and that's the output distributor. And output, and they're already connected, right. So let's go out again. So where are we now? You are here, right. Basically I go this way, this way, where am I? That door, oh no that's the lift, and here's the door. Okay, right, so now that we have uh, connected the, uh, bat uh, the batteries up to most of the ship, Let's get these distributions sorted out. Now, <laughs> these are the deck quadrant distribution sensors. As you can see, this particular one, there, there's four of these, one for each quadrant. Uh, and you can see half, this is for aft quadrant here. So half quadrant X display A, B, C, D, E, F and G. Now I can see there's no load balance because we haven't connected them up. We are going to just connect these to each individual sections. Okay now once these are connected as you can if you follow these cables they go into here and out through here we can see that this is now this is the quadrant distribute distributor for a G jet. God, this is turning my tongue, tongue in my turn twister. There, uh, quadrant distributor for G deck. And as we got the these three lights coming up, you can see the feed aft quadrant distributor for G deck is ready to take in power because it's got a live load there. At the moment. It is still taking power from the startup battery. So this is what this means: feed aft quadrant distributor from the startup battery. And we want to stop it from using the startup battery and start taking the uh, the power from the reactor. So when we do click that, the lights has changed to, to indicate we are no longer taking back back power from the battery, and we are now taking power to this section for the uh, quadrant distributor uh, for the, uh, the main reactor. However, as you can see outside we have still got red lights. And if we had a little look up here as well, there's a lot of red lights everywhere. That's because we've only just one, done one portion. Uh, there are several portions that we need to do. So we'll go through the or we got quad uh, we got uh, four quadrants on each both F and G deck. 
So let's go through these. Um, oh, by the way, as you can see, you might have noticed these have got like six cables. Six, is it six coming? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cables coming out, but only three cables coming down here. That is because the rest are going in here and up to the deck upstairs. But once we finish these, we will look into that in just a sec. So, as you can see from here, let's have a look at this one here. This one is not receiving any power coming, and I should have showed you this previously, but it's still taking power from the startup battery for this quadrant jet. A quadrant distributor for GDEC port. So let's redistribute power around here. As you can see, those are all started going in, and we've now received power in from here. So the power is coming in into these sections here. Live loading, we've got now got power. We connect that, goes up down here now I know you say you I know you can see these three ports here so you've got quadrant supply feeds power supply to those quadrants reactor room supply yeah uh, <laughs> so what we get in here is this is coming into for, for, uh, this one is providing power to G deck ring one uh, port ring 2 port because we are in the port uh, distributor and the reactor room and we can test these oh, no. but no, I don't think I should I don't want I don't want to call <laughs> I don't want to disconnect and uh, cause a system failure but yeah but yeah if we um, now we've uh, transferred that one over. We've still got two more to do, so let's quickly do these ones. And switch this over to uh, to reactor from the startup battery. And finally do this one here. Oh. that switch that over from bat uh, startup battery to reactor and I think that's everyone done okay so that is basically for this level so as we look outside we can see all the lights are now proper except for in here but don't worry about that that's just work in progress however we've just done for down we've just switched these over downstairs upstairs uh, F deck is still on battery because remember I said earlier those cables come in here and the other four come out to these parts here and these are still set to start up distributors but as we've already done all the powers, uh, power uh, connections down there we just need to switch these over because these are now receiving power they so just switch these over so switch 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 and switch there we go now everything is all receiving power good uh, all receiving power fine from the main reactor now other things that we didn't go through here so that is set that is what we just done we basically uh, redistributed power from the batteries to be sent out to uh, set out into the main quadrants of engineering and the ship so hopefully if anything happens that these batteries will be able to still keep working so that we can still work on the en engineering in the case of a main uh, reactor failure these batteries will still carry on um, will still carry on until they run out of juice but hopefully that should give us enough time to fix any problems or be killed in a fiery explosion but hey ho here we go next up the ftl system yes this is receiving 
power straight from the main uh, main feed as you can see that is the um, main reactor feed and that goes straight to the FTL drives same thing with the shield the shield gets sent directly to the uh, uh, from the main reactor to the shield so we're just turning those on to be perfectly honest, I think these should be connected to the batteries as well, but I don't see any signs for it. It looks like the FTLs, shields, weapon systems, and sublight propulsions all get their power directly from the reactor. So let's just turn these on. get these powers directly from the reactor uh, and not buffered through those batteries that we did earlier so yeah that this is kind of to be perfectly honest this does seem like a kind of a lot of work just to turn some lights on but I guess this will be what keeps main engineering running or in future there may be a way to provide uh, to uh, uh, to divert power from these battery away to provide extra power to I've like the the shields or extra power to weapons by diverting power from these battery arrays which could reduce power in other systems but that's yet to be implemented or thought of but yeah so that's what we've got so far everything's all nicely powered um, one last thing that I wanted to talk about in here before uh, before we go up to the bridge and that is as I said earlier the start capacitor even though at this moment in time whilst this is just a te uh, test demo the start capacitor has seems to have unlimited amount of power so it won't run out and it would always be there so if you ever have to go dark for whatever reason you'll always have power in your startup capacitor to be able to be able to restart your ship however when this game properly comes online that prob that most likely won't be the case so we need to get into the habit right now of connect or of charging the start capacitors so now that we've got everything all nicely supplied and we've got excess amount of power going through, connect this so that power gets rerouted to the startup capacitor to charge it up for the next time that the uh, reactor goes dark. So if the reactor turns off, gets shut down for whatever reason, we will have enough charge left in our startup capacitor to be able to restart it. So I think that will be a good habit to get into of keeping the startup capacitor charged. And remember, it's just over here. Now, ideally, right now we can disconnect some of these. And if um, we can disconnect these because we are no longer receiving power from the battery, but we are receiving all power to the reactor. As we're receiving power to re from the reactor, this is no longer necessary. But it's a good idea to keep these going just in case. It's a redundancy system. It's just in case there might be any sort of like fluctuations or power drain or the batteries run out. And just for a few moments, you, run it, you, r you lose power. This will probably allow you to keep things go uh, keep going temporarily because I have have actually turned those off before and uh, I lost power to the entire ship but that's not supposed to happen I don't think anyway that is all from this engineering you just got one last bit to do and that is all the way back up into the bridge so we have provided power to all the decks and all the main weapons and also like the science labs and everything I didn't see anything here go back here through 10 forward which is facing aft <laughs> down here and on to the bridge the last place that needs en energy is of course the bridge 
Uh, firstly, I like to put on. We've got several things here. We have the bridge lighting, bridge hardware, a deck lighting, and a deck hardware is already on. But if we take these off, then you probably won't have any lighting out there. So let's just have a little look. See what happens if I take these off. As you go, as you can see, no lighting down here. Why is all this? Eh, there shouldn't be lighting in there, but hey ho. Still work in progress. Let's turn those back on. Okay, I'm going to turn on bridge hardware. And this is what I like to, I lovingly call, romantic mode. <laughs> and uh, I do like the idea of having the place lit up by the ominous glow of the command consoles as we look out into the darkness of space. I think it's very romantic, so I like to call this romantic mode. But hey oh, if you've had enough of romantic mode, let's turn the lights on and if I can switch it. And there we go. We're all ready for our exploration. Now oh, we're good. So, that has been a complete cold start from beginning to end with my little uh, take on the situations. I hope this is enough for you to get your PhD in engineering so you can start up your future starship when it, ever comes, when, when it comes to the time. Uh, if there's any comments or queries you've got, please to ask them down in the, in, the, uh, in the comment section down below. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've done in, uh, in playing this. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys out there.